we can also try to find a power shear solution of a second order differential equation. This first example will solve a familiar differential equation, you know its solution already, in order to illustrate how the technique works in this case. In a consecutive video, we will solve a differential equation that we could not solve before, but let us start with this familiar example in order to get used to the techniques. So we solve y double plus y equals zero. Well, uh, set y equals some cnx to the power n as a power series. We need y prime and y double. So here we have y prime, and here we have y double. Uh, and then we shift the summation index. We set m equals n minus 2. So if n starts at 2, m starts at 0. And uh, n equals m plus 2. So we get a m plus 2 and m plus 1, cm plus 2. And now we have here again x to the power m. So uh, we want to plug it into the differential equation. We have uh, y double plus y. Y, we have some n from 0 to infinity, c and x to the power n. But now we know that this m is just a summation index, so we can rename it to n. So we have an n, an n plus 2, an n plus 1, a c, n plus 2, and x to the power n. So our y double is over here. Plus with this, plus y equals 0 with the summation sign. So there we plug our answers into the differential equation. Now we observe that uh, we have some power series equals zero. That means that on the right hand side we have zero times one plus zero times x plus zero times x squared, etc. etc. Which means that all those coefficients here need to be zero for all powers of x. So for n equals zero, one, two, etc., those coefficients. Uh, before the x to the power n has to be zero. So this coefficient over here has to be zero for all n. And then we see that c0 and c1 are free to choose because this relation expresses c2 in terms of c0 and then c3 in terms of c1, etc., etc. But c0 and c1 are not specified by the relation, only the higher coefficients. So c0 and c1 are free to choose. And c n plus 2 equals minus cn over n plus 2 times n plus 1 for n from 0, etc., and so on and so on. And now we observe, if we plug in, for example, uh, n equals 0, that c2 is given in terms of c0. Okay. And then if we plug in uh, n equals 2, we see c4 is given in terms of uh, c2. And if we plug in n equals 4, we get c6 given in terms of c4. So we see all even cn's are given in terms of each other. And something similar happens to the c1. If you plug in n equals 1, we get c3 in terms of c1, and then c5 in terms of c2, etc., etc. So we can uh, look at the even coefficients and the odd coefficients separately, because they do not interact with, with each other. So let's do the even ones first. Then we see uh, c2 equals minus c0 over 2 times 1, by plugging n equals 0 over here. And then we plug in n equals 2, we get c4 equals minus c2 over 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 1, so 4 times 3. So we see uh, c4 equals uh, c0 over 4 factorial. And then if you go on c6 uh, by plugging in n equals 2, we get c6 equals minus c4 and then in the uh, denominator 4 plus 2 and 4 plus 1, so 6 times 5. And if you plug in what uh, c4 e is, c4 equals c0 over 4 factorial, so you get a minus c0 over 6 factorial. And then we see the pattern. You start with the c0 with a plus, and the c2 is a minus sign, the c4 is again a plus, c6 is again a minus sign, so we have a minus 1 to the power n for c2n. We always ha have a c0. And we are dividing by 0 factorial, 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 6 factorial. So c to n is divided by 2n factorial. So now we recognize the pattern for the c to n. Now, an odd, so uh, c1 is 3, plug in n equals 1, we get c3 equals minus c1 over 3 times 2. And well, we don't see the pattern yet, of course, so we try uh, n equals 3, so c5 equals minus c3 over uh, 5 times 4. 
and C3 was uh, minus uh, C1 over 3 times 2, so we are left with C1 over 5 factorial. So we're starting to guess what happens probably. If you plug in n equals 5, you get C7 equals minus C5 over 7 times 6, so you get minus C1 over 7 factorial. And we again see the sign is, the sign is flipping all the time. We have a C1 and then a C1 is a plus, the C3 is a minus, C5 again a plus, and C7 again a minus, so you get again minus 1 to the power n for your odd coefficients. Your C1 is always there, and you are dividing by 1 factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial, 7 factorial. So you see 2n plus 1 is divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. And there you have your even and your odd coefficients. So you can summarize, you can yeah, here you have your total solution, even terms and odd terms. So for the even terms, we had an explicit expression times C0. For the odd terms, we had an explicit expression times C1. Uh, C0 and C1 are free. And now you recognize the power series as the power series of the cosine of x and of the sine of x. So you can conclude that your final solution, y of x, equals C0 times cosine x plus C1 times the sine of x.